All right. Um, hello, everyone. We are teams of uh, Khalifa Tower, and first, I would like to introduce my team members, Grace, Shi Hong, Evan, and also Jennifer, currently in US, and myself, Tony. And today, uh, we would like to give you guys a presentation regarding with the uh, so power structure interaction on fundamental period of the Khalifa Tower. Uh, so first, I would like to introduce Grace to give us a a brief overview and motivation of our project. So the presentation will be divided into six, seven parts. The motivation, objectives, background, methodology, result and discussion, summary and conclusion, and statement of contribution. So I'll be covering the motivation and objectives part, and Jennifer will be covering the background, and Shihong will cover the methodology part, and Tony will cover the result and discussion, and while Ivan will cover summary and conclusion and also the statement of contribution. So firstly, why do we choose to undertake this project? This is because firstly, when the four choices appears in the poll, we are we found Khalifa Tower to be very captivating because it is the tallest building in the world in Dubai and it has 163 stories. But then we begin to wonder, um, although Dubai is not in a seismic zone, is this located near to a very active seismic zone, which is in Iran? So we begin to wonder what if Dubai gets influenced by the seismic activity and how should this tallest building withstand the earthquake impact. And according to the municipality of Dubai, every building in Dubai is built according uh, to withstand the earthquake impact. And the Burj Khalifa itself is built to withstand the impact of a magnitude of seven of an earthquake. And we choose to focus mainly on the part of the soil pile structure interaction because through uh, hearing to professor's lecture and also doing some research by ourselves we found that soil pile structure interaction has a fundamental has an impact on the fundamental natural period of a building so what is the fundamental natural period or the natural frequency of a building so basically fundamental natural period is an intrinsic value of a building a construction like um, this material is hard. Hard is an intrinsic value of this material. The fundamental natural period is an intrinsic value of this construction. So uh, during the earthquake, there are many different sinusoidal waves that have different frequency. And one of the frequency will inevitably match with the natural frequency of this building. And when this occurs, resonance may happen. Uh, when resonance happens, it means that the trough of the the trough and peak of the frequency of the building and also the frequency of the earthquake matches, and thus the amplitude will like um, superimpose on each other and thus create some detrimental impact on the building, and this will result maybe in the collapsing of the building, like in the one instance in the Roman history when the soldiers. Uh, stepping frequency matches with the bridge frequency and causes the collapse of the bridge. So it is important for us to figure out the natural frequency of a building and thus helps us to predict wh uh, what is the maximum deformation of the building when the frequency of the earthquake matches with the frequency of the building. We will do this by employing a comparison between a building without pile and another building with the pile because we want to investigate how does the soil pile structure interaction influence the natural frequency of this building. And we will perform two analysis. The first one is the modal analysis. Through modal analysis, we can find the natural frequency of this building. And through harmonic motion analysis, we will be able to impose, a, impose some different a force that has different frequency ranging from 0 0.1 to 1. And thus we can see how does the different uh, what is the maximum deformation of the building when the frequency of the force that we impose matches with the frequency of this building? The objective of our 
uh, research is to investigate the influence of soil power interaction on the natural frequency of the structure. And next, I will invite Jennifer to give us a brief introduction of our project. Thank you for the nice introduction. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the background history of the Burj Khalifa, as well as some information about its foundational build. So the Burj Khalifa could be said to have been a recent project as it was built on January 4th of 2010. It's located in Dubai, and it not only stands tall at 500,000 tons, as a symbol of the UAE, also known as the United Arab Emirates, but is also a physical representation of the country's foresights and wants. The three talented architects on the screen who had designed this marvelous 162 floor building was intending to go for a neo futurism architectural style, which was essentially incorporating urban design that connects with human values, as well as displaying the usage of technology for which you can tell from its modern interior and the aesthetic exterior shell. Next slide, please. So when talking about the inspiration of the Burj Khalifa, we have to talk about the spider lily, which is a regional desert flower. So this particular flower is widely cultivated in the lands of Dubai. And aside from the three leaf structure, similar to how the petals of the flower protrude the stem, as you can see in the picture, the side wings of the Burj Khalifa also extends from its central core structure, showing their many shared characteristics. Next slide, please. So when talking about the usage of the building, there is a variety of purpose that was destined for this tower, but its original idea was to make it the tallest skyscraper in the world. Um, it has now been incorporated into a residential hotel, restaurant, and home to a lot of entertainment that attracts tourists from all over the world. The meaning of the tall height of the building holds more than just aesthetics. It was meant to symbolize the fast progression of Dubai and acts like an emblem of the Middle East. When it was first built in 2010, the Burj Khalifa was the tallest building in the world, and this was also done so to signify Dubai's role and position, more specifically to emphasize the necessary existence of Dubai's oil trade through tourism. Next slide, please. So let's take a look into the interior foundation, and I'm going to give a brief summary. The foundation of this building is supported by large concrete raft design consisting of 3.7 meter thick foundation and an underground pile supporting system. This particular design allows the weight of the building to be spread across a large volume, decreasing specific weight load at any point. The tower's unique Y-shaped structure provides both aesthetic and shapes the core of the building. Its functionality also reduces wind force and setbacks provided by its stable configuration. The Y shape is also addressed as a buttress core, which is a structural system with three wings extending from its core and heavily reinforced by support systems. And this type of structure will allow each individual floor plate to provide a different width. The shaping of the building will cut down wind flow, which is especially needed in tall buildings for emphasized safety and durability. I would now like to welcome my teammate, Shi Hun, to talk about the methodology of the model structure. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. And now I'm going to introduce the methodology of our group. So our methodology are mainly about two aspects, the geometric model and structure properties in ANSYS. You can see that in our model, there are two parts. The first part is main building, which is the tower as shown in the right picture. And the second is pile foundation. The third is soil stratum. These are three pictures of our main building. You can see the connection between main building, pile foundation, and also soil stratum from the side view. And about the top view, do you guys still remember the inspiration of Burj Khalifa? That is spider lily. And our uh, top view of model exactly looks like a uh, blooming flower. Our main building was constructed tier by tier. And every subsequent tier will be narrowed and last tier. For the first three tiers, um, the wings in all three directions will be set up, set back, so that the shape of first three tiers are kind of similar. However, since tier four, there will be only one of three wings be set back. You can see as the sketch shown right here, the right bottom corner of the sketch is set back and other wings are intact. 
after this sketch being extruded, there will be a new tier with one wing being set back constructed. And in general, our model is in a spiraling shape. And the next part is Pi Foundation. Our initial Pi Foundation refers to the foundation plan, official foundation plan, and there are 192 pies on it. Each pie is about 47.25 meters long. However, this initial pie foundation just too complicated and the uh, meshes, the number of meshes on it exceeded the numerical limitation of NC. So we have to simplify our pie foundation. We reduced the number of piles from 192 to 15 as shown here. Um, to make the influence of this modification on efficiency of foundation as little as we can, the total cross-section area of simplified foundation and initial foundation are the same. And the length of it is also unchanged. Besides, the location of simplified pipes are also well designed after the calculation. And next is about soil stratum. There are four layers in our soil stratum, and there is a blank space among the middle of soil stratum that is preserved to the pi foundation to prevent overlapping of model in advanced analysis. And the second part of methodology is structure properties. And I'm going to talk about the materials that we assign on our model. For the um, main building and pi foundation, the upper structure of main building is structural steel, and lower part is tower concrete. The foundation just default concrete. The difference in density of this concrete um, as shown here, and the density of main building is calculated by using the total weight of Burj Khalifa, which is 500,000 tons, divided by the volume calculated by ANSYS. And the Young's modules that we applied here are just from engineering data of the ANSYS. And then it's a material assigned on our soil strata. There are four layers. The first layer is made of soil, and the second layer consists of limestone. The third layer is about sandstone, and the last layer also limestone. Our, of course, our uh, soil strata was simplified, but uh, to guarantee the accuracy of our Young's modulus, the Young's modulus of every tiers here are uh, obtained by weighted calculation of thickness and Young's modulus of submaterials inside every layer. And then it's connection method that we use. For the contact regions between upper structure and the lower structure of main building, and also the pi foundation is bounded to simulate the real condition. And for the contact regions between pi foundation and every layer of soil strata, that's frictional. And the frictional coefficient is about 0 0.3. And the last thing I want to mention is mesh. The mesh, our meshes on model is generated automatically by ANSYS, and with default mesh size, which equals to 87 meters. And as I have mentioned, um, the meshes, the number of meshes in our initial pi foundation just two in normals. And after simplification, you can see uh, the mesh on our simplified pi is just much more simple, uh, which fulfills the restriction of academic version NC. And that's all for my part. And now let me to invite Tony to give us introduction of model and harmonic motion analysis. Uh, thank you, Shu Hong. Um, so uh, in order to verify the nature, natural frequency of the main tower and investigate the influence of soil power interaction, our teams have conducted both um, a model and harmonic motion analysis of the structure. Uh, so uh, also to have a better understanding of, of, of the soil power interaction, we have, uh, more, we have sketched the um, structure, uh, two, two type of structure that like shows on the slides. On the, on the left hand, has, uh, uh, on the left hand side, the structure is with, uh, without power foundation. And on the right hand side, the structure is included a, a power foundation system. Um, so, 
uh, that's the here's the result of our model analysis, and this structure is uh, do not contain uh, a power foundation system. And uh, as you can see, the deflection deflected shape, and uh, for mode number one and mode number two. And here is another um, model analysis result that the structure with a power foundation system. Uh, mode number one and mode number two. Okay, so uh, at the end of analysis, we come out two tables that uh, contains uh, the, uh, the the natural frequency of the structure uh, uh, under the mode one to mode number six, and uh, the the left hand side the table shows on left hand side is is the structure that we saw the power foundation, but and also the table shows on the right hand side is the structure with the power foundation system. And the result indicates that the uh, structure with the power foundation system would have a large uh, natural frequency, but a, a, a small, sorry, small, uh, a less, a small natural frequency, but a large fundamental period. Um, this indicates that the slow power integration may uh, increase the fundamental period of building. So uh, we we have also do an actual harmonic motion analysis to simulate the seismic motion and verify the natural frequency of the building. And as you can see on the slides, um, here's the deflection shape of the building that without a power foundation. And uh, we're looking at the period equal to 13 seconds. The uh, structure has a a maximum res response amplitude equal to around 50 meters. Um, that was that was I would say that was uh, pretty makes sense because the uh, the the, the period uh, the fundamental period of building was uh, approximate equal to 30 seconds and also power motion the period of power motion was equal to uh, 30 13 seconds. Therefore, um, in this situation, the, the renaissance occur. So the the structure would have uh, would act in a ma maximum response. And uh, here is another defect shape that uh, the, the structure that includes the power foundation system. And when looking at the periods equal to 23 seconds, uh, it has a the structure has a maximum response amplitude equal to uh, 70 meters, and that that was also makes sense because um, uh, the fundamental period of the structure that has a power foundation was approximately equal to 70 seconds, and that's the, the value is approached to the uh, period of the hydro motion. So, and in this situation, the uh, Renaissance occur, so the structure act uh, half the maximum response. Oh, also, I would like to show you guys the the total deformation for the uh, on the top of the tower is equal to three meters that have a power foundation, but it's four meters to not a power foundation. Therefore, um, that the one half power foundation has a less deflection. So um, overall, our model analysis is successful, and um, our teams have achieved our analysis goals. So, but but they're they're still necessary to uh, reveal some of the few assumptions and uh, modeling decisions. So um, our project focuses in entirely on um, modeling and sketching uh, the external building features. But um, our teams do believe that the interior structural components may or will significantly impact the uh, fundamental period of building. Uh, so um, we have compute the uh, we have compute the mass density of the of the building by using the total mass of the uh, structure divided by the total volume of the structure. Um, uh, the second point is the soil layer property and soil stress parameter included in ANSYS may not be the same compared to the exact size half. Um, some soil layer properties and Soil stress parameter, including friction angle, uh, engine shear stress, are not in considered in uh, ANSYS software. 
uh, but we only input the modulus of elasticity of each soil layer into the ANSYS. Um, the second point is the power group composition configuration is complex. Uh, in reality, the Khalifa Tower was constructed based on uh, 20, 200 piles in a power group. And, but we, we just, uh, cause the ANSYS cannot be able to solve a multiple mesh and to give a solution. So we just, uh, simplify and adjust, uh, the, uh, the, the piles to a small, uh, large diameter piles and, uh, less power in the power group. Although the hieronym motion analysis of our, our structure generates meaningful results, but uh, there, there are some limitations restrict, uh, restrict us to investigate the soil power interaction under a seismic loading. Uh, cause, um, so the point is the ANSYS cannot mobilize a seismic motion uh, because earthquake is not considered as a hieronym motion. And, um, to uh, the, the seismic analysis required um, hazard response spectra and uh, and peak ground acceleration to calculate the phase shear and uh, lateral displacement of the building. And also this topic may relate to the set effect and wave propagation. So, uh, and this, this, this topic is way complicated than we expected and we have not included in, um, analysis part, but, uh, but please know that we have some of the uh, er, seismic historical events mentioned in literature review section. So that, that's all about the discussion and analysis. And I would like to introduce Evan to give us a brief uh, summary and uh, reflection of our project. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, let me briefly summarize the presentation of our group. <clears throat> so, what our group uh, basically did is that we conduct a harmonic motion analysis to verify the natural frequency of the tower, uh, and the result manifests that. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. And the result manifests that uh, with SCSI, which means that soil power structure interaction uh, will decrease the natural frequency and increase the natural period of the tower. So um, it also uh, means that uh, with SCSI, um, the piles are really helpful of resisting vibrations caused by earthquake and increase the stability of the tower. So uh, let me repeat the result of our group again. So the natural frequency of the tower without pile is 0 0.072 hertz, and the amplitude of the wave is 50 meter. And the natural frequency of the tower width pile is 0 0.043 hertz, and the amplitude is and the amplitude of the wave is 13 meter. Uh, okay, so our model does have some limitations, and uh, I summarize it here. So first, uh, we lack soil material and modeling. Uh, which means that it is not realistic to, mo to, to simulate the real soil state in ANSYS. Uh, for instance, um, we use soil, limestone, and sandstone in our foundation model. However, a wide variety of materials are utilized um, in the real foundation base. For example, sand, cog tofa, sandstone, conglomerate, siltstone, and mudstone, uh, according to the research done by uh, Jandy and Jandy in 2004. Um, and second, um, the materials are said to be linear uh, in ANSYS, which plots against pressure and deformation, which means that if you add uh, the pressure onto the material, the deformation will certainly increase uh, in linear. But in real, um, <clears throat> the materials are not um, all linear, so uh, it will cause systematic errors and, and then cause uh, influence uh, to the natural frequency and natural period. And third, <clears throat> our model doesn't 100% match the real shape and the structure uh, with the real Khalifa tower. Um, so um, the weight and volume of the model is uh, not 100% um, the same with the real tower. So according to research done by Murthy in 2004, 
Uh, mass is correlated with the natural frequency of the tower, so um, our results may be affected uh, because of the mass and the volume. <coughs> um, and for the fifth limitation, uh, in reality, the structure is partially void. Uh, but in ANSYS, the, the, uh, like the, the structure is set, uh, the default uh, is, set, is set to be solid. So our, our uh, group realized this uh, issue, so we um, changed the uh, mass density role uh, to a maximum uh, match with the, uh, with the real uh, mass density of the tower. Um, but um, this change, um, this change, um, uh, this change will uh, will definitely cause a problem in um, natural uh, in cause error and uncertainty in natural frequency. Uh, but it matches with the with the third uh, with the first and second modes uh, according to the analysis. And for the last limitation, the number of casting place pile is not exactly the same compared to the real number of casting place pile. Uh, so according to what Sheehan just uh, introduced, that we uh, in order to simpl uh, simplify our model, we just constructed 15 uh, casting place tiles. But in reality, there are more than 150 tiles. So uh, the difference um, in number of casting place tiles will uh, certainly cause the uh, uncertainty and error in, um, uh, in natural frequency and uh, natural frequency and natural periods. In, in addition, our computer cannot match and calculate the results. Uh, so for improvements, I think that uh, if we can get access to answers for addition, we can get better results uh, regarding with natural frequency and natural periods. And also for further studies, I think uh, our topic will be determining how pile configuration influences the anti-systematic uh, performance of the uh, Burj Khalifa Tower. Tony? Oh, oh, wait, sorry. Um, let me briefly introduce our, our contribution to you guys. So um, Tony works on results and discussion, uh, modeling and paper compiling. And Sheehan mainly works on methodology and modeling. Uh, Grace works on literature review, methodology and paper editing. So I work on reflection, statements of author contributions, conclusion and PPT editing. Um, and Jennifer works on introduction and executive summary. Uh, so, so our uh, thank you, Evan. So our modeling and analysis process is very successful and uh, helped the team to further understand the relationship between the solar power interaction and the fundamental period of building. And uh, we, we would like to thank uh, for our professor Burha to uh, the, the support and help our uh, uh, both uh, sketching and uh, analyzing the structure. And also we would have thanks for our teaching assistant, uh, Blaya and Curtis for uh, help and support, also for all of the classmates. Thank you all. Very Thank you beautiful to give any comment or question. Beautiful slides. Thank you all for a wonderful presentation. Just one remark. Uh, I think I, Tony said that uh, they replaced the number of piles with 15, but uh, made sure that the cross sections are the same. Is that uh, what you said, Tony? There's a question for you from Professor Boha. Um, uh, Tony is just wearing his earphone this now. Uh, just one short note, uh, because I know that you need to catch catch the dining hall, or you will run out of food. <laughs> Can I say it again, Professor? Yes, uh, didn't you say that you replaced the piles with 15, 15 piles, as opposed to um, 